Yo, 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 welcome to Hard Pass. I am your host, Jacques Slade. So today on the show, we've got Jordan Brand on the decline, but not really. Fake Yeezys, according to Kanye. Kyrie Irving and Anta going all in. The week's hottest sneaker releases, spoiler, it's Kyrie. And of course, a hard pass. All right. As we always do, let's start the show with some hot takes. After months of hand-wringing, Adidas finally did what most predicted they would do, and that's sell their remaining stock of Yeezys. Kanye had something to say about this, of course, and we could dive into what it all means and whether you should buy those fake Adidas Yeezys or not. I mean, we could do that, or we could just keep it moving. We choose the latter. One minute he's taking pictures with the Adidas CEO like everything's cool, the next, He's telling us he's being sued by Adidas. All we really care about at this point is whether or not we can revive our favorite hard pass bit, and that's trying to explain what Yeezy colorways mean. Copper is a blend of red and bronze colors. Since it's a natural tone, a copper hair dye is needed to achieve the look. Copper is one of the most popular red hair colors for the fall season. There are different shades of copper fade, including soft strawberry, deep ginger to copper penny. Sell the Yeezys. Don't sell them. Whatever. They sit, they sell out in seconds, knock yourselves out. There are going to be fans of Kanye who don't buy these because Kanye told them not to. Then there are fans of Kanye who will buy these because they couldn't care less about the drama and just want to buy Adidas Yeezys with the ease of buying a Jordan Retro. And don't forget about the resellers who are looking for something, anything to make a quick buck off of after their business plan of backdoor Jordan Retros make money repeat went up in smoke. They sell out, they sit, Whatever, let's all just get on with it, people, but not before I leave you with this gem. Here's Kanye in 2016. I feel like the Air Force One or the Shelto speak to the ultimate version of what sneakers were 20 years ago. And I think there's something about the 350s, that feeling of what sneakers are today. And I just wanna keep going in there and working on the shape and the last and the way the knit feels, the padding, the colors, to hopefully make the shoe where 20 years from now, people say the 350 represented what shoes were in 2016. And here's Kanye. In 2024, everybody knows the 350 been corny. I mean, he's not wrong about the 350s being the shoe of 2016 when people look back at the year in 2036, but the ride from ultimate to corny has been a wild one for sure. Wonder if he's gonna say in 2044, people are gonna look back and say Yeezy Pods are the ultimates too. Anyway, one of the biggest topics at the moment is the lack of momentum at Jordan brand. The coolest thing to say in sneaker culture right now is that Jordan brand is done. Retros are sitting on shelves, resale prices are crashing, and nobody's wearing them. However, in an Instagram post by the good folks over at Sneaker Freaker, they did some actual research and found out that the numbers that actually matter to Nike are still moving up. At the end of fiscal year 2023, which is the time period between May 2022 and May 2023, Jordan brand earned six point six billion in revenue, which is 16.4% of Nike's total earnings. It's also a 29.4% increase from fiscal year 2022. Just for our own edification, we looked up what Jordan Brand earned in fiscal year 2013, a year that included retros like Gamma 11s, Laney 5s, He Got Game 13s, Taxi 12s, and Toro 4s. The Jumpman earnings in 2013? around 2 billion. So if it's a choice between everybody getting fit pics off with their J's on the gram in 2013 or TikToks of randos declaring that Jordans are dead in 2023, I think Nike's choice is pretty clear. Here's where we stand on the whole situation. Jordan brand business might be booming, but they are in a creative rut. It's a great time for those of us who just want to walk into a store and buy a pair of Cherry 12s or Gratitude 11s or Fear 3s without having to deal with lines and bots and vultures, but the rise in prices sucks. And for every newish concept that becomes a hit like the Nike SB Air Jordan 4, there are dozens of retros that don't move the needle. Collaborations with Travis Scott, Union, and Ama Manier still sell out in seconds, but those partnerships are getting a little long in the tooth and there doesn't seem to be any rush to find the next generation. We'll always welcome retro classics like Royal Ones or White Cement 3s, but the calls for improved quality control? Well, those are getting louder. In other words, It's business as usual, kids. We'll see how Jordan Brand performed in fiscal 2024 when Nike has their investor call in a few months, but unless there's a drastic drop in earnings or the growth isn't where Nike wants it to be, you can expect more of the same in 2025 
and beyond. Our pick of the week is the Anta Kai One Artist on Court. This is on March 6th for $125. Like, this is it, right? Yeah, it's right there, Jacques. We're, behind you. It is, it is right there behind me. Uh, we here at Hard Pass feel like there's a lot of stakes going into this release. For the first time since D-Wade left Jordan Brand for Lee Ning in 2012, a legitimate NBA superstar is launching a signature shoe line with a Chinese brand at the peak or near the peak of their play and popularity. Look, no offense to guys like Klay Thompson or more recently Nikola Jokic, but they're not moving the sneaker needle like Kyrie Irving or D-Wade. However, even though Wade was fresh off a championship when he signed with Lee Ming, his sneaker track record was spotty with stops at Converse and Jordan brand. To be fair, Wade did have people checking Converse for a second there in the mid 2000s, but it was fleeting at best. And then there was that brief stint at Jordan brand. Yeah, those Jordan flyways in that picture where he's holding up the infamous Air Jordan 2010 with MJ. I bet they both would like to take that one back. But as for Kyrie, he's closing in on a decade since he last had a significant championship moment. But his sneakers were always top of mind amongst today's generation of hoopers. When it came to Nike basketball, Kyrie's were the sneakers you saw the most on and off the court. It helped that the shoes were priced below his teammates both at Nike and in the NBA like LeBron James, Kevin Durant, and even Adidas guy James Harden. But Kyrie's unique connection to his fan base also helped in that regard. Yes. Kyrie said and did things that made people raise their eyebrows in confusion or bang their head against the wall in frustration, but they were counterbalanced with moments of brilliance on the court and a socially conscious mind off of it. While we hoped many times on this show that Kyrie would start a black owned sneaker brand, signing with Anta likely allows him creative freedom to do what he wants at a scale that lets him hit the ground running. And that $125 price tag? That lets you know they are serious, man. For what it's worth, Clay Thompson's Anta KT9 goes for $160. The leaning way of Wade's are priced closer to KD and LeBron than they are to Kyrie and teammate Luka Doncic. Jordan's signature shoe costs $5 more. Launching the Kai One at $125 is the message that they want everybody wearing these. And with a distinct launch colorway that is unabashedly Kyrie, I have no doubt that these will sell out immediately. What's going to be important moving forward is a steady stream of new colorways that consumers see Kyrie wearing for the Mavs, but are able to buy as well. <clears throat> Learn that lesson. <clears throat> goodness gracious, Devin Booker. Oh, goodness, Devin Booker. <clears throat> what I don't want to see is Anta playing the hype game by limiting releases, which forces Kyrie fans to buy the Kai one at resale. That might work in the short term, but that's not going to benefit anybody in the long run. Like I mentioned earlier, Kyrie's last significant championship moment was nearly a decade ago. He's 13 seasons in and his run as a perennial all-star is closer to the end than it is at the beginning. There's a small window there to sell the Anta Kai one to fans and to Hoopers, most of whom have probably never owned a pair of Antas or have even heard of the brand. I can see the Kai one being super successful in ways that Anta has not been able to do with their other signature athletes. It's going to be the Kai two, three, four, and how Anta handles that distribution that's ultimately going to determine where the Kyrie sneaker future has legs past his playing days. Oh, and I guess I should say all of these concerns I have for the Anta Kai One line are strictly for how it's going to be perceived here in the US. In China and other Asian territories, Irving's line is probably going to bring in huge numbers for Anta and give them a signature athlete that can compete with Li Ning's way of Wade. While we move on to the next thing here in the US pretty quickly, athletes like Wade found out that they can stay in the game long after retirement if they sell their brand elsewhere. Like, against all odds, Adidas still makes Derrick Rose signature shoes and retros because there's still demand overseas. Kyrie is following in the footsteps of Rose, Wade, Stefan Marbury, Tracy McGrady, and others who have an outsized following in Asia. I have no doubt in my mind we'll get to the Anta Kai 10 like we have the way of Wade's. The question is whether or not we're buying them at Foot Lockers and sneaker boutiques here in the U.S., or if we're going to have to figure out how shipping is calculated since they're coming directly from China. All right, more hot takes. So Jay-Z, 
He's been making sneaker headlines lately. During the Super Bowl, he wore the Reebok S. Dot Carters that, according to friend of the program, Brendan Dunn, were new pairs made by the brand for him several months prior. And last week, during the Lakers game against the JV team, he was seen wearing the off-white Chicago Ones. It's been an interesting few weeks for the former question mark creative director of Puma Basketball? Is his sneaker free agency a sign of things to come or is he just having fun wearing whatever he wants because he's Jay-Z and yeah, can he live? Galaxy Brain prediction? He signs on with Anta and becomes creative director there and then they build up the Kai brand into something truly major in the US. Anyway, uh, Kai Sinat's and Nike's latest uh, Athlet stre Athl Athl streamer, Ath stream Ath streamer. We're going to go with that. He's the Ath streamer. Well, anyway, he was featured on the Nike app and it had a link to check out his Twitch stream because he was going to give us an exclusive peek at the new Nike Air Max DN. So being the intrepid journalist that I am, ah! I clicked on the link to see how this new generation of streamer and brand partnership looked like. I am an intrepid journalist. Don't, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. I looked because I thought maybe I might even learn a thing or two about how this generation that's coming up through Twitch builds an audience and I can use that to my own benefit. And then I saw Kai talking to a white girl about who knows what, not talking about the shoe. Then he moved on to some other streamer, still not talking about the shoe. I logged off after about a minute later, so much for learning about the next generation, I guess. According to some comments I've read, I guess Kai didn't know that Nike was going to link to his stream and he was in the middle of a dating show with nothing but white girls. Well, good to know where some of that 6.6 .6 billion went. Look, it's probably just a miscommunication and Nike and Kai will get this sorted out in the future, but man, it's the wild west out there when you work with streamers, I guess. Um, Off-White revealed their latest sneaker and it's called The Baller, not gonna lie. For a second there, I thought LeVar Ball had found a way to get back in the headlines again, but that doesn't seem to be the case, thankfully. It's not the first time we've seen a basketball sneaker use an actual basketball for inspiration, but it's probably gonna be one that your favorite celebrity is gonna wear at some point courtside at a Lakers game because it's made by Off-White. No offense to the Airwalk gyms, but a Kardashian-Jenner isn't gonna be seen wearing those. Off-White Baller kicks? Definitely a possibility before the end of the year. Uh, the Nike KD-17, it's leaked and it has strong Air Max vibes, which is kind of weird. Like, we don't see Kevin Durant wear Air Maxes that often, but you know, maybe Nike asked him what he wanted for the 17 and he said to make them look like the Air Max Plus. Totally possible, just a little surprising. I mean, he has expressed his love for Dunks and Jordan 1 Lowe's for a while now, so how they don't become an inspiration for the KD-17 with the reverse swoosh is a little curious, I guess, but we'll hold off our actual takes for these until we get official images. For all we know, this could be a takedown model or something else entirely. Uh, Bathing Ape. They're getting into the retro runner's face with the reveal of their newest silhouette, the Crosta. It's historic for a lot of reasons, but mostly because it's a cross-brand collab between Bathing Ape, um, New Balance, and Sock... It's not? It's not a, it's not a no, it's not. It's not. Oh, uh, not a not between. No. no, not at all. Okay, so it just looks like a mix of New Balance and Sockenies. Kinda, sort of. Okay then. Well, um, uh, congrats on the new release, Bathing Ape. Uh, James Harden is getting into the PE sneaker that might be better than anything that's dropping at retail and that has people upset. Game with the Adidas Harden Volume Eight dubbed "Proud of Me." It's an obvious nod to the Prada America's Cup sneaker. Get it? Proud of me. Prada, proud of me, Prada. <laughs> it was, okay, all right, I see where this is going. Anyways, the America's Cup actually has a history of inspiring signature shoes like the Reebok 4 Answer Ultramarine. Considering Adidas and Prada have a recent history of working together, it's a little surprising that this isn't an official collaboration. I mean, we know James would be down for this. He'll wear anything, and I don't mean that to be as bad as it sounds, unlike the team he plays for, the Los Angeles Professional Junior Varsity Basketball Team. Anyway, it's time for this week's Hard Pass, where we take a look at something in the culture that just needs to go, like the Clippers rebrand. Last week was a historic one for the LA JV basketball team. They played their final game against the 17-time world champion Los Angeles Lakers as co-tenants at Staples Center, and to commemorate it, they did it in the most clipper-ass, clipper way possible, blowing a 21-point lead in the fourth quarter. I mean, it honestly hasn't been great for us Lakers fans for the past decade to have to listen to Clipper fans, all six of them, gloat about their record against us, but hey, we'll take that if it means we've raised six banners and a mini one for an in-season tournament while they've raised, wait, let me, 
Nothing. 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 Sorry. I had to get that out of my system before getting into the hard pass. I, I apologize to all six of the Clipper fans. Uh, look, it has to do with their historic rebrand as they move into their shiny new arena that Steve Ballmer hopes will make people love them in LA. Good luck with that, Steve. Why you think you're going to make a dent in Inglewood, AKA the heart of Laker country is beyond me. They should have taken a page out of the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim towards Newport Beach and moved to Orange County. They could call themselves the Los Angeles Clippers of Irvine or whatever, or better yet, go back to San Diego where the Clippers name makes sense. Yes, I know the Lakers name makes as much sense as the Utah Jazz, but whatever. We got 17 banners. We can do what we want. Anyways, Moving to Inglewood with new uniforms is fine and all, but man, they had a great opportunity to move on from the Clipper name. I read the ESPN feature about the rebrand and Balmer said that they did focus group with fans that said that getting rid of the name was a non-starter. I mean, who are those six people who told you that, Steve? The Clipper's name is a curse, a blight upon the NBA, a symbol of futility and bad mojo. A name change signals a new era that is devoid of anything that remind anybody of the Donald Sterling era. You could have attracted a new generation of LA fans that for reasons that I cannot possibly fathom, want to break from tradition and not root for the Lakers. But by keeping that name, you evoke the losing, the bad draft picks, the heartbreaking playoff choke jobs and the phrase, Clippers gonna Clipper. You had one job, Steve Ballmer. One job. Those six fans would have stuck with you even with that name change. It would have been fine. Hell, I would have been excited to watch a Laker game at the New Digs. Keeping the name with such a wretched stench that even a championship or two won't cleanse it. I'm sorry. That was really me. That was me. I'm sorry. I apologize to all I don't. six of you and nope. Steve Ballmer. So seven. Anyway, that's going to do it for the show. Thank you guys for watching Hard Pass. I am Jock Slate. I'll see you next week, but not before we leave you with the viewer Hard Pass. And it's a long one because he's got a lot to say. Hey, good morning, Jock Slade. It's your boy JB, a.k.a. Soul Cool J on Instagram. And I want to give a hard pass to Nike for the latest release of the Air Jordan 5 Olive, the GT Jump 2, the Zoom GT Cut 3, and the Hustle 2 being considered colors that are for University of Miami adjacent and not FAMU. I mean, we're just coming out of Black History Month. FAMU is one of the most world-renowned known historically black colleges and universities, not only in the United States, but in the world. And our colors, we bleed orange and green. But the fact that they wouldn't release these as FAMU colors, to me, I give a hard pass. I know FAMU is like a LeBron James school. Um, and he releases shoes and colorways that way. But with these being so close, pretty much FAMU colors, I'm surprised they didn't release these as a FAMU colorway of these sneakers. Um, instead of calling them something different. That is my hard pass. I love your content. Jock Slade, love what you do, man. Continue to strive and continue to be a thing. Peace. All right. It was a long one. If you would like to be featured, possibly featured in a future episode, call us at 818-493-9325. Leave a short message. He did not listen to that part of this message. Nope, not uh, no more than 30 seconds. All right, I'll see you next week. Peace. The voicemail's still going. It's still going. It's a long voicemail. Oi. We had to cut it off.